great. Give a high five to your neighbor to the left, to the right, in front and behind. And then you can have your seat in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu wa Sifiwe. Jamani Bwana Yesu wa Sifiwe. Are you well? Are you well? Amen. What a time it is. Happy October to you. I hope you shared that with your neighbor. What a month. What a month. Happy October to all of you. We bless the Lord for all of you in the house today. Um, I want to do two things just before I start to preach. Um, if you're here and you graduated in the month of September, can we see you by a show of hands? Come only graduate September. See September. Say you miaka zilipita September hii mwaka. Hii September. If you graduated in the month of September, let, just simama, simama tu tafadhali. We want to see this is the youth service. We want to celebrate all the people that have been putting in their energy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Celebrate. Celebrate. Come on, Shiloh. You can do better than that. Celebrate. Yes. Amen. The Lord bless you and do you good. We celebrate you here at Shiloh. We thank the Lord so much for you. Whatever it is that you are studying, may it open doors for you in Jesus' name. May the Lord release you to your full inheritance in the name of Jesus Christ. And many congratulations on your graduation. May the Lord give you all the other places that you're asking him for in Jesus' name. Ukiona hao watu after service, reason to liwambia wa simame, unamuona unamfinia kitu ya Pentecost kwa mikono, unamambia congratulations. Masomo si raisi watu wa mungu, wama namna gani? Si raisi, ndiyo mana ujarudi kufanya ile enye ulizema utarudi, si ndiyo? Si raisi, so ukiona wame graduate, mfinia kitu with you. Useme, don't care about the amount. The amount is, it's not about the amount. Kwa mambo ya mungu, eh? It's not about the, abu ambia jirani yako, it's not about the amount. Have you marked their faces? Kwanza majirani wao? Eh? Mmeona? Akina Esther hapo jirani ya graduate na kina redemptor hapo na Jambu. Mmeona watu? <laughs> Wonderful. Now, as we're talking about also, it's not about the amount. I want to make a passionate appeal. Buwana Yesu Asifiwe. Have you ever desired to partner with God when you're hearing there are projects like we are raising 30 million? Ukasema, mungu ile siku nitawai pata 30 million. Mungu, nitakuwa na support hivi kanisa na itolea hivi nini. Have you ever desired? Mnijibu, have you ever desired? Yeah? Okay. Do you find yourself, maybe you prioritize. Ukipata ka mshahara kako, ama ile pesa, ama ki mshahara kiyako. Ukipata kenya unapatanga, ama unafanyanga biz, pesa yako imekuja, ukipata hiyo pesa. Do you prioritize like kingdom project? Tunasikia, eh, um, kuna, kuna, najua project inaendelea, najua kuna shailo, najua kuna nunuli yangu maji, maua, sijui nini, batteries inaitaji, easy microphones inaitaji batteries. So I must, I must give. If you find yourself prioritizing, unasikia, kwa mshahara yako lazima kukue na pesa enyo me budget for, ita kwa offering, ukipata pesa ini tithe iyo you give towards because you want the work of the ministry to keep going um if if those if that is you if that is you if you're those people who you consider it your responsibility wewe unajua mimi nikitoa haujali ni pesa ngapi auogopangi unajua wale watu auogopi kuchukua bahasha urusha hapo 10 bob juu ndio tithe juu ilikuwa na so like you're not caring about the amount you just know it is your christian responsibility to partner with god in the work of financing the work of ministry if that is you if your answer is yes to all these categories or to at least two thirds of these things those are three questions if all three three out of three or two out of three if that is you hata kama one out of three alafu unahitaji tu mtu akusta up in faith if that is you today the bishop is inviting you to a kingdom financiers meeting at the main campus. Turn to your neighbor. Muangalie. In fact, let's do it the way bishop would do it. Shika mkono yake, msalimie. Ana sweat. If they are not sweating, they are highly likely a kingdom financier. Highly likely. If they are not sweating, if they are sweating, just tell them. Next time, bro. Next time. Ama anaiza kuja tuju ya faith. But... If that is you in any of those categories that I've spoken about, you really desire to just be a kingdom financier. And you are faithful. You, you prioritize giving. You know that he kazi hayezi kaendelea bila wewe. Unajua hivyo wewe personally. Usiangalia amount. Nasema hii wale wakona pesa wanatoa ama million. You, you know your 10 shillings, 100 shillings, 1,000, 10,000. Unajua hiyo. Bila hiyo. Ukitoka leo, tutafil gap. If you know that is you, feel that responsibility in ministry, you are the kingdom financiers we are talking about. And so on behalf of Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kemani, who is our senior pastor, in case you are a visitor, we are inviting you to a kingdom financiers meeting today at the main campus, Palazima, 
at 1 p.m. The meeting is going to be very brief. It will not go beyond two. So it is going to be less than an hour, significantly less than an hour, because we have school of leaders happening in the very same place. So you can have a guarantee that before an hour is over, we will be done. You can also have a guarantee that if you get there at 105, we will have started the meeting. Juma Kingdom Financials ni watu wakuna time, sindio? So, that's how you start doing your practice, ladies and gentlemen. Tuinkia hapo, tuinkia hapo. Sawa, sawa. Angalia jirani yako mara ingine moja. Anasweat? Ako sawa? Ako sawa? Aya, muambie basi ini yako. Muambie ini yako. All right, that's what we're going to be doing today. We invite you one more time on behalf of the bishop, Karibu Sana Sana Sana. Now, the last time we stood in this place, my name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm so honored to serve the Lord here. It is a true, true honor of my life to serve God here and the bishop, Dr. Jimmy, and Pastor Alice Kimani. And I love just seeing your faces today. You look glorious this October in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the last time we stood here, uh, we talked about the believer's practice. Do you remember? We were talking about which believers practice. You know it, that one. Uh -huh. A bit louder. Witnessing. We said that was the believers practice, to be a witness. Because that is what the Lord has called every one of us as a believer to be. A witness. We said a witness is somebody who you see something, you experience something, and then you come and you give a first-hand account. Unasema hapa nimekua, hapa nimeona, nimeonja, ninajua. Bwana isu asifiwe. So that's what we want to do. We just want to continue with that for just a little bit and see how far we're going to get in the name of the Lord. We're in the book of Acts chapter 7. Um, Acts chapter 7. Is that Acts chapter 7? Let's actually pick it from Acts chapter um, 6. That's um, before we go into Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 6, and um, I'm not going to read all of it, just to give a brief preview, that in those days of the early church, the number of the disciples was multiplying. There was a complaint between, uh, against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, okay? And because the complaint was that the widows of the Hellenists were neglected in the daily distribution. And we said this just to recap for the people who are not here, that, that in the early days of the church, because the society was highly patriarchal, um, they, they, if if somebody lost her husband, yeah, and she had children, or she didn't even have children, if somebody became a widow for whatever reasons, that it was the church's responsibility to take care of them. Because most of the times, the women are not very, very empowered, okay? So they are not able to take care of their affairs. So most of the times, the widows would be in a bad place. They would suffer. So the church, the early church, organized themselves and they took care of the widows. How did they do it? They gave them a daily distribution. Part of what the daily distribution looked like was walikuwa naangalia, pesa yenye meingia, wanaangalia vitu zenye ziko, and then you give to the widows a daily, kama ile a daily bread. You give to them a daily portion so that they can go and take care of themselves and of their families. It was the church's responsibility to take care of each other. So there is this group of people who are called Helens who are also believers the Hellenists, who are also believers, and they, they were complaining against the Hebrews, all of them in the same church. And their complaint was just that they were feeling like their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So they brought this complaint um, to the apostles, the leaders of the early church. And so the 12 apostles summoned the multitude of the disciples. They said, it is not desirable that we should leave the work of the ministry or the word of God to go and serve tables. Therefore, they give the responsibility to the people and say to them, seek out from among yourselves. Seek out seven men of what? Tulisama mambo yalikuwa mangapi? Mambo yalikuwa mangapi kwa kweli? Matatu, wakasama men of? Ah, you have to preach together with me today. Men of? Men and so this was the criteria that was given by the apostles. He said, seek out from among you. We are not going to import help from outside there. We are not going to come and serve the tables ourselves. We will not leave the work of doing the, um, the word of God. What you're going to do is to seek out among yourselves because the solution is within us. Seek, seek, among yourselves, um, seek out from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Which business, beloved? Of of distributing 
that daily daily when i eat a that daily distribution of looking after the tables or they actually put it like serving the tables okay and then what are we going to be doing the apostles they say what are we going to be left doing and we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word and that's where we stopped and we remember when we were stopping we were saying that what a beautiful thing it must be that these were the qualities that were being looked for by the early church leaders when they were appointing people to come and do what did not seem like a very deeply spiritual work, a work like serving tables, a work like giving the daily distribution, among the things that these people must, had, or must have had, needed to have had, was they needed to be men of good reputation, they needed to be men full of the Holy Spirit, and men full of... That these people require to have these things. Where we ended it, if you remember well, we said that we, need, we needed to ask ourselves that if these were good qualities for solving such a practical issue, it seemed like such a practical issue, yet there was need for wisdom, there was need for the Holy Spirit, there was need for good reputation. We understand good reputation and wisdom for a practical issue, but need for full of the Holy Spirit, that must point us in the right direction. We're in the year of redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. These fathers that we're talking about who founded the church, this was the early church, this was how the church was supposed to be. So somewhere along the line we may have lost that, and so we are looking for people with good looks, we may be looking for, I think we even ended it by saying, think even about the kinds of people you look to invite into your life as your friends. Because if four of your friends are millionaires, guess who the fifth one is? <laughs> that may be true. That is true, by the way, because he who walks with the wise grows wise. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. But that cannot be the only thing that we are looking for. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. I said it cannot be the only thing that we are looking for. When you're looking for friends and companions, you must look for people of good reputation because bad company corrupts. Is that 1 Corinthians 15 and 33? Bad company corrupts good morals. So you can't be looking for people. Why in wale wa baya wale wa zi kwa estate? Wa sema, these are the people I want. You gather like you you know, just, who was it Pastor Paul was preaching to us about that guy? I forget his name. Who gathered to himself ma vagabonds, wakakuja tu, Jephthah, wakakuja tu ma vagabonds. Jephthah, wakakuja tu wa zi, wakora, wa izi tu, wa cherati. How sandi No, you look for people of good make it. And men who are? And? That thing must go down into the depth of our souls. That whatever it is you're looking for, if you are an employer, if you're here and you're a boss, well, labda wewe ujioni kama boss, lakini wewe una, ukona biashara yako unajiri watu. Wewe ndiyo boss. Najua wakuiti hivo, lakini wewe ndiyo boss. Bwana sifiwe. Kama unatafuta watu wa kazi, you must be looking. Those are some of the qualities you must look for. That's why believers should be, we should work hard to make sure that we are pulling our weight at the marketplace. For those of you who are in the marketplace, but nice to ask you. So that you're not the lazy people at your tour hey, when I'm Christo, kwa kiangalia kwa CV, meandika hivi Christian, wana sema, kakando. That should not be it. We must go back to redig the wells of our fathers where people would seek out Christians because Christians were people who would be known to be faithful stewards, stewards of time, faithful stewards of the company's resources. You must be those people. We must redig those wells in Jesus' name. Bwana asifiwe. Apana umepati wa kazi na ikona deadline ata hauta wai deliver na ata hauko apologetic ishindo kwa jina la Yesu Christo. Ati umeamuka tu hivu unasema, now it just feel by the way, I just feel like a holiday. At your indie kazi, your pepper is shind. Nasio kwa genzi peke, kwa genzote. Bona iso sifiwe. If you're looking for a life companion, Bona sifiwe, my single people in the house, you must look for these qualities. Men and women, people who are full. Oh, let's start it from the beginning. Men of? That's right. Nisawa ukienda kuuliza mabishi zake. Ask. Get recommendations. Yet ukienda kazi. So you know, a recommendation letter. Your previous employers. <laughs> you may not go to the previous people. Because those ones will highly likely not give a good recommendation. But you can ask the people who surround them. 
Hakuanga mtu aina gani? Na wewe ukikuja kuulizwa ndugu wa kiroho jamani amekuja hapa ameona unatembea na msichana fulani. Anataka huyo msichana si wewe anataka ni sawa sawa wako atakuja. Akikuja kukuuliza usitake tu unataka tu tutoe uh, my, my girl tunataka tumtoe tu sokoni tu msukume tu she must live by all means. Unaona ule mtu mwenye unaenda sokoni anakuambia hii avocado ni mzuri ni mzuri ni mzuri anasema wacha nifinye anasema au sifinye ni shakufinye iko sawa shika tu. A a Bwana sifiwe. Of good So ask. And then you must look also for people who are full ah you have to say it loud my people full of the holy spirit you're looking for a life, life companion it's not just cuddles and laughter and just smiles sometimes it gets hard we were saying with a friend of mine the other day we have to we have to listen to the people who are married especially in the body of christ because they are always telling us this thing marriage is work but it works okay we cannot be thinking ah oh, wow ours will be different as we don't you know yeah yetu itakuwa na challenges it cannot be that everybody that has gone ahead of us i know we are positive thinkers all oh, sunshine sunshine sunflowers and whatever that's great you know you attract whatever it is that all those laws that we hear in new age whatever that's, that's all that's all okay but there has to be something that they have experienced bishop likes to tell us that even somebody who has been married one hour can teach you who has not been married even a day okay so tunasikia hizi so you, when they tell us that sometimes it gets hard that somebody said to us recently that marriage is a holy spirit job married people in the house sini kweli naona wengine wanainua mikono huko juu huko nyuma marriage is a holy spirit job what that means is that you need the holy spirit kuna kuingine kuna kauka kuna kuwa kuzito hapo mnasema acha tuombe tuombe hii kitu Some of these will not come out pastor Alice has taught us but by prayer and fasting now imagine trying to convince somebody who is not full of the holy spirit and wisdom to pray and fast get so tunasikia njaa kwa nini na tukana chakula kwa nyumba si nimenunua chakula shida iko wapi huko unajua unataka mtu mmoja ana that by the time unakuja church kuambia pastors kumedhoka mmeshajaribuko kwa nyumba sema pastor please pray for me you are telling the pastor pastor please join us in prayer eh hey, hiyo kitu inakuja vizuri eh hey, i know i know i know there is more to it it's not, see mtu akwa tumepiga magoti mnaomba kila wakati i know there is more this guys there is more but full of the holy spirit and wisdom and the bible says proverbs chapter 4 and 7 is it that wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and in all that getting get understanding where does wisdom come from we've said this here before many services proverbs 2:6 for the lord gives wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding so if you're getting wisdom where does wisdom come from from god so you must go back to the very beginning the holy spirit ties this thing together the holy spirit in the center gives you a good reputation the holy spirit in the center gives you wisdom so the holy spirit hallelujah That's what you look for. Imagine what the world would look like if we would have teachers who are filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Not just good reputation. We, a lot of our emotions would still be intact. Aunque kwa umetukanwa kule ulitukanwa kwa sababu ya kuanguka hesabu. Imagine if our doctors would all be filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. They have a good reputation. You go to them because they've been recommended. Bonaiso sifiwe. That's why it excites me when I see young people who are just filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom and of good reputation like Dr. Mark, Dr. Mark akawapi wa ibada and then he's just in school studying medicine and surgery. We must pray for those ones. Wachomoke watokeleze. Let's do when the bishop was commissioning the opening of the Cornerstone Junior Secondary School. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Coming soon to a media outlet near you. If you didn't attend yesterday, don't worry, we got you covered. You're going to be seeing it. But yesterday when the bishop was commissioning, he gave us stories about young people who were grounded in the word of God in Cornerstone, and then he has met them outside as doctors and physicians and other things. You know, people who are grounded in the faith and then now there are doctors who are filled with the holy spirit and wisdom hallelujah imagine that that before a, a, a surgeon begins to cut open a patient and i say in my or we always begin by calling on the name of the lord jesus christ <laughs> that would be a bit imagine a pilot 
that is filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. We have a friend of ours who is a pilot, and we are always saying, I look forward to a time when I will get into a flight where Captain Nimrod is flying. Because that man is full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. The man of God has wisdom, and the man of God is also filled with the Holy Spirit. He knows what to do. The Lord is instructing him. The Bible says in Psalm 112, verse 4, And to the upright there appeareth a light in darkness. You know that is the importance of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Ya kwamba mtu ambaye akondani ya mungu, na roho wa mungu akondani yake, ukondani kunao muangaza tupu. That they cannot be stranded. Hey, buwana sifiwe. So that is what they did. They sought out from among themselves men who are filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Good reputation full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. And that is what happened. And they brought to them Stephen, a man of faith. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. It says, then, come on, say then. Then the word of God spread and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. You see, we said these were the disciples. These were, the, these were witnesses. This, we said that is, those are good qualities of a witness. Those are things we must possess ourselves. We must be of good reputation, filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. So that wherever it is that you're going, you're not going hurting people and killing people and wounding people and saying things that are out of sorts. You're not going around this life and apologizing can never apologize to anybody full of pride. No, you're going out filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of power. You're going out filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That when people meet with you, you are full of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. Wherever it is that you're going, you are the very representation of Jesus Christ. A witness. That must be the believer's practice. What happened when these people came into the church? Of course, they solved the problem of the distribution, of, of um, the neglect of the daily distribution of the widows of the Hellenists. They solved the problem. But among the things that also happened, it says it in verse 7, that the word of God spread. Do you see that it took several individuals? When they came in, of course, the devil was trying to fight the church and was trying to stop the growth. But when they came into the picture, because they continued to uphold the good witness, the word of God spread. The solution for this nation, Kenya, will be in the various witnesses that we will be. Hallelujah. Do not think that you're too small to make a change, my people. You are not too small. Do not think you're too young. In fact, when the Apostle Paul is writing, is it in 1 Timothy 4.12? He says to Timothy, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. Someone said to us that most times it is you that looks down on yourself because you are young. Do not let anyone despise your youth, including yourself. But be an example. We, it is time that many of us, all of us young people, became bold and apologetic about our witness in Christ. That we are willing to say, even though we have to figure Mali per management office, you're willing to put down your foot and say, no, I cannot do what you're asking me to do. If I die, I die. If we perish, we perish. But I shall know. How can I do such a thing? against my God. And I'm thinking, how can I pay my rent if I don't do this thing they're asking me? No. Good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. If you go to YouTube, just use your bundles for something great and go to YouTube and look at how lions operate. This is the end of type 2 lion hunting. Usi type righteous, bold, lion. Just, light, just lion, hunting. Just see. Yani, unaona lion inaenda inarukia giraffe. Giraffe yiko uko juu hata ina kazi ya mtu. Yiko uko tu hewani, inatafta tu majani. Alafu unaona tu lion, imerukia shingo tu. Usema, who do you think you are, Mr. Lion? Una lion inaamua, wacha niende kwa hii buffalo. Buffalo ni kubo inatosha it can just finish it. When you watch those clips, I'm a big fan of Nat Geo. Big fan. Are we Larry? 
I'm a huge fan. I love watching animals do their thing. It really excites me. Um, and many times when you watch them, you will find that Atakama Wanasema, it is the king of the jungle. Many lions die when they're hunting. Many. But that does not stop them. They are bold. They are not the biggest animals in the jungle, are they? They are not even the fastest or the strongest. I hear the hyena has a stronger grip than any other animal. But Biblia is saying the righteous are as bold, strong as a hyena. Because the hyena is also fearful. It says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Who are the righteous? The believers. The people who have been made into the righteousness of God in Christ. You and I, not because of our actions. If you're looking at your actions, my beloved, you will never stand. But because of Jesus Christ and his victory at Calvary, you and I have become the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. So the righteous are as bold as a lion. That you're able to stand and say, this thing I am being asked to do, I shall not do it. Hallelujah. You're able to say, this place I will get out. It is scary, but I will get out. Hallelujah. You're able to make bold decisions. These are just examples, of course, I'm giving. As we are here, we know the Spirit of God is in this place and He's speaking to you concerning the areas where you need boldness in your life. For some of us, it is just going over fear that you're so worried and anxious about how things could be, but you're just saying, I will go. I will go. Quite if the other people who go, what do they have? See, they are human beings. I will go also. We are redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. Aman Nagani. I like to give the example of how the bishop tells us he came to Zimmerman. That in this place there was nothing. Kule mali walikuwa metoka huko hapta. Unuko isli kulikuwa kuzuri. Kulikuwa kumeninu wajua watu walikuwa naishi huko ma civil servants. Huko ndi walikuwa. Huko ndi kulikuwa na watu huko hizo ma areas. Huko islando. Unuko hatu ukienda leo kuna kuwa na lami. Ilifika huko kitambo. Zima tumepata kabro tu juzi hata ijamalizika kila mahali. Bwana yesu tusaidia. But he said, I will go to that Zimmerman. That place that was full of reeds. Some of you who have grown up in Zimmerman, you know how Zima used to look back in the day. Uku matawi, ma, uku reeds, kila mahali. You're thinking, where is this that Bishop was going? But the righteous are as bold. You're looking at it just like Abraham of old. Lot anangalia, nasema, eh, huku ndio kuna rutu bajamani wacha nyingie huku. Abraham anasema, haya chukua huko. Because Abraham is like, I have God. Nitaangalia huku, and as far as the eye can see, the Lord will give to me. So mine is to keep walking, and the horizon keeps just going further and further. And the Lord is giving to me all those places that I am going to. I am not afraid and saying, I, nobody in my family has ever done that. No, 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 no. The righteous are as bold. Buwana iswa sifiwe. Buwana iswa sifiwe jamani that the Lord is going to release to us that thing inside of us that will start us up to be true witnesses of the word. Because the result of it is that the word of God will spread. We are looking for God to infect many other people. It is first by our individual assignment. And then when we are successful at it, more of us coming together like-minded people, then there is an impact. People can say there are, the nation can truly be 80% Christians because we will see the results of it. It says the word of God spread and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. May the Lord give that to be our portion as we continue to seek it, to be witnesses. The Bible says, it continues saying there, and Stephen, or Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders. This Stephen is the one who was mentioned up or two. He was one of them. So we are looking at him. He's mentioned or pulled out here as a good case study. And we could look for him for just a few moments before we wrap this up. Stephen was a good example of a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit, a good reputation, and wisdom. It says he was a man full of faith. You see, that's the thing about the Spirit. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, it is not one, one thing. The Holy Spirit comes and himself unpacks. See, the way in an airport, it is one suitcase. But you and I both know, one suitcase is not just one suitcase. Inside it, there are things. Do you understand? It is just, this is one body. But inside this body, 
mara na figo na matumbo yapo ndani kwa kweli roho na kaigangio kako huko ndani yani it is just it may look like just one when the holy spirit comes to us as the person of god he is the holy spirit true he is part of the trinity god the father god the son and god the holy spirit but we know that the holy spirit inside him contains the fullness of everything that god is so when we are of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom we are not just getting at at three things no beloved we must open our eyes to think we are receiving all of god the list is innumerable we cannot begin to say that oh it is just this and this and this we cannot among those things was the fullness of faith that we are told about Stephen here and power bwana is wasifiwe the demonstration of the very works of god if we are digging and repossessing the wells of our fathers then when we are filled with the holy spirit we go about and god is using us to do great things hallelujah I want to challenge you and just ask you when was the last time you heard that somebody was unwell and just stepped out of it and said let me pray for you my brother you see it is many times because we are full of fear zama sasa nikimwombea alafu bado aendelee kumona kichwa na sasa ehe akiendelea kumona kichwa si ni sawa kwani ni wewe unaponya boldness beloved is a thing that we must get but where do we get boldness by acquiring this righteousness this imputed work of christ inside of us accepting the full sacrifice of jesus and his victory over satan at the cross hallelujah when we begin to live in that fullness of the reality of what jesus has truly done we start to walk in these things the bible says and stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and signs among the people Hallelujah. I don't see how that cannot be the testimony of any one of us in this house today because God shows no partiality. If he has used men in the past, he can use you and I today. All we need to do is to submit ourselves before him, to his means of cleansing, to his work, to his power, to his operation. We just say, "Here I am, Lord, send me, send me." Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, a witness That is what the Lord is calling us to be witnesses of his glorious work witnesses of what he has done that when we have taken it upon ourselves that my one description is to be a witness then I can step out you might be saying oh nimeokoka tu juzi ah umeokoka period yani uko ndani yake Kristo kazi yako sasa ni kutembea kutenda kufanya anavyofanya Mungu that the fullness of Christ is realized inside of you because you have accepted what he has done for you and for me Hallelujah. Jamani Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Now I want to just turn this as we are bringing it to a close to realize that the thing about Stephen when he went about not all the hands were clapping. For not like eh say it and say it you guys must give Stephen security because that's how this man is moving in power. He's full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit. As why goes on I'm saying my bouncers kila mahali eh wase muangalieni. Poa just like oh Stephen at tunasikia anaenda huko akiponya watu anafanya ma great signs and wonders. Bum chinjeni tafteni tuone vinyo tam home sale lazima akufe You see when we're talking about persecution and oppression in the early church it's not the same as what we call persecution today our persecution is that nililalanja And that's okay I mean to each their own I mean come on but why if you're being persecuted because of being hungry it's okay there's nothing but um, there's nothing guys there's nothing against come on askianja we askianja and talk about it solution iko tu huku Mbona hujasema amen solution iko tu huko. Kwa mimi nataka foreign aid. Bishop anatuambia anga mwenye amekaa kando yako anaweza kupea thau. You know there is a day that bishop said that I was seated when <laughs> There is a day bishop said that I was seated with Pastor Peter Murage and Pastor Peter went into his pocket and removed a thousand shillings and gave it to me. I I said amen. <laughs> So hata sasa nikisema hivyo usiogo <laughs> Somebody just they are saying mercy lord mercy lord mercy <laughs> The solutions are right inside here The persecutions that the church was going through back in the day were persecutions persecutions these people were being hunted their lives were being hunted but that did not stop us 
So it just brings us, in the midweek service we've been studying about, um, we've been going through the book of James. If you don't come to our midweek service, you're missing out on the growth of the church. Both here and at the main campus, our service starts at 6.30 to 8. It's just one and a half hours out of your Wednesday banner. You can do it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. You can do it. Unaji challenge to tunakuwa tumechoka si wote imagine tunakuwa tumetoka job okay i promise but you just come and you live refreshed and then the church is growing in the same direction the word of god spreads hallelujah so this is for those of you mnakuwa uko tu mama tu unasema tu relax and whatever just just ebu just just tell god just try god one just come i'm not saying at you when you come see you what is going to happen but i can guarantee you there is going to be growth inside of your life spiritual growth hallelujah so if you can please Please make it a point to come to the, to the midweek services. So we've been going through the book of James. And the book of James at the beginning is talking about counting it all joy when you go through various trials and tribulations, when you're going through various tests. And a lot of us, especially those of us young people, to end up through adulting. Now adulting the assignment. Kweli si kweli. Adulting kona mambo yake. Any una juliza, how is it? You see, you see those memes people saying that you go to a party and children are coming to tell you, Uncle Naza kunya juice, you say, what at a message? Yet I mean ataka kujua. Kama to me allow you a kukunya. But now we are the adults, guys. We are the adults. You you hear your mom saying, When I was 26 is when I bought this piece of land. Your father says, When I was 22 is when I proposed to your mother. By the time I was 23, we had the first set of twins, your brother and your sister. And we had already gotten a piece of land somewhere in Mwemuto. We had already. Up... <laughs> Bishop, I'm going to say, 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 I'm or 1520, Pastor Bittis and Nambia Mshara ilikuwa 1520. Yeah, same. So you're thinking, uh, how, uh, that, something right. Something, but you know, when you're, when you're going through those things now, because we are the adults, you realize the more weaknesses you find in the system, the more you realize your need for God. I don't know whether it's just me. But every time I sit and I look around me and I realize, hey, it looks like the game has been rigged. Then I realize, now I need God. Because you see, the thing that has not changed is that that same God back then, same God right now. Hallelujah. That's our advantage as believers, that we have a God who has not shifted. We have a God who has left the lights on any time we can come to him and find solution. You're not confused. You're not wondering, where is it? One of my favorite qualities about Jesus, or one of the, my favorite ways that Jesus described himself, is that he says, I am the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12. That's how he presents himself after the case of that woman who was adulter or caught in adultery. I am the light of the world. Anyone who walks in me will not be caught in darkness. I am the light of the world. Somebody said to us that when you go out to the port or to the ocean in Mombasa where the, the, the ships, are going about how the ships are steering across the oceans and are led safely to the docks is not using people who are announcing aya sasa piga kona aya sasa apo kuna mawe apo uko kuna koro no there are lighthouses that have been placed in different places kwa ocean the lighthouses they steer the ship without making noise they just do what shine the light faithfully that whether it is day or night whether it is this time of night or the other time of night, the light is steady, constantly shining. So long as you can see this light, you know that you're on the right course. So long as you can locate the light. And that's the thing about our Lord and Savior, isn't it? That as the light of the world, he is shiftless. He does not change. He remains constant. If we can locate the light, we can make it home safely. Buona Yesu Regardless of the challenges and trials and tribulations that come at us, but the thing about Stephen, and I'm not going to preempt the story so that you can just go and read it. You can find it all the way from um, chapter 6. And when he's um, arrested, continues to give his address, he talks about, he begins to talk to them from the beginning. The call of Abraham to the patriarchs in Egypt. He talks to them about how God, God delivers Israel by Moses. He continues to talk about how Israel rebelled against God. He continues speaking about presenting to them God's true tabernacle. And he tells them how Israel rejected and resisted the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, when they heard these things, these true things, they were cut to the heart. 
You see, when we read earlier, at the beginning of the year, we were looking at tradition and repossessing. We said among the ways that the church grew was that when they had the teaching of Peter on the day of Pentecost, they were cut to the heart. Their response was that they repented and the numbers were growing. But these ones, when they had it, they were cut to the heart, but their response was that they gnashed at him with their teeth and then they went at him with stones. But the Bible says, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, this is, chapter, this is chapter 7, verse 55. It says, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. The Bible says, then they cried out with a loud voice and they stopped their ears and they ran at him with one accord and they cast him out of the city and they stoned him. So Stephen is known as the first martyr, somebody who gave his life up for the sake of the faith, refusing to, um, to stop speaking about this Jesus, refusing to cower under pressure. And that is the definition of boldness. We said we are looking at him as our case study. We said the righteous are as bold as a lion. Our definition for boldness must be as witnesses that we love the Lord so much, come what may hatubandu kijaman that we are not compromising. We are not going to cower under pressure. We are not going to give in to compromise. We know that the things around us are heavy, but we know we have the helping hand of God at our side, day and night. The qualities of a real witness as the believers practice that every day, my everyday ordinary life has to do with me being a witness. Those qualities include me being Bold, because I am filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, from verse 11, it says that from verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives even to the death. That there is an accuser of brethren, the devil. That's not news. We have been taught here before. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your accuser, your enemy, your adversary, the devil, goeth about. He is looking for someone to devour. But you, be steadfast. Stand firm. Resist him. Hallelujah. We have been given an upper hand. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. You have an upper hand against the accuser. Because he is a toothless bulldog, the bishop has told us here before. He is one of those ones who we know for sure has been defeated. Our enemy is a defeated enemy. He is already a vanquished foe. We have been given power over the enemy. We must therefore be bold, knowing that our victory has already been won. Because very many times we allow ourselves to be scared by the roar of the enemy. It is not the real, he's not the real lion, but he's a good imitator, I'll tell you that for sure. Because he goes around even masquerading as an angel of light. But many times we are deceived by the roar of the enemy. I pray that the Lord will open the eyes of our understanding. That we will see truly that the one who is roaring... It's just a cut. I don't know. I, in, in the ropes program where we serve, in the rites of passage, we have an activity. Let me preempt it in case you're here and you have a child who is in ropes. We have, a, have, a, have an activity at the end of the camp where the boys slaughter a goat and the girls slaughter a, a chicken each. Okay? So that's a lot of food at the end of the day. But that's not the point. So... Um, when they slaughter the chicken, these are class 8 students, okay. Class 8 students in this generation, okay. Okay. So many of them, they cry mercy, the girls. They cry out for help when the chickens are coming after them. Because it is their job to take the knife and slaughter the chicken. From your faces, I can tell you don't like chicken much. Oh, oh it's not the chicken, it's the knife? Okay, great. 
you, you, you hear them screaming. And many times as counselors, we just stand and watch in amazement. And up or chinja ivi. Nduru, kuku anapiga nduru, msana anapiga nduru, sasa hata mama anapiga nduru, wanakimbia, kuku ndio huyo anakimbia headless chicken, it is pandemonium in the camp. But you see, when you think to yourself, what can a chicken truly do to you? Somebody will say, oh you know a chicken can just with its claws, just lock into your neck. How many times does that happen? I mean, how many times? You know, it can come with its beak and it can just poke your eyes. What precision, ladies and gentlemen? What precision? How many times does that happen? But you see, many times the enemy causes us to focus, just like the young little girls, to focus on what could happen that will not happen. So it grounds us right where we are. So instead of moving out and doing what the Lord is calling us to do, living our lives boldly, instead of doing that, what do we do? We just cower back in fear and we're just like, anyway, I guess, um, we just cower back in fear and just like, anyway, I guess, I just cower back in fear and so upo njaa, siku zako zote upo njaa kwa sababu umekatatu kushika kito we umepewa na mungu. Chinja kwa jina la esu. Bwana esu I pray that the Lord will start up our faith. This boldness that we are talking about as witnesses full of the Holy Spirit that we will take it to ourselves to realize that that roar I am hearing in my life is the roar of a defeated enemy. It is not much he can do. He could scare me with his roar, but I could go out and do it afraid anyway. Hallelujah. We are not saying we, are, we have been kept or hidden from reality. No. The things that are happening in the world in Kenya are happening to all of us. Lakini last Sunday, Bishop Akatkumbusha, kama wa Christo, kazi yetu nikifanya nini? Shakuwa ndoyo. Kukanusha ina require boldness, my people. Unakanusha rafikizako wana kwambia, oh, hey, bro, zima, zima yo kitu. Sindio? <laughs> You need to be bold to make some statements. You need to be bold to go to your friends who you have been drinking with to tell them, Mimi hapa sirudi tena. Nasema, ni sawa, mtu anasema anga tuivo. Utarudi tu, bro. Kesho, in fact, ukikuja kesho, on me. On me. You require boldness to be able to look at them in the face and say, Hapa, nimekunywa, leo. Hii, niamwisho. Mimi nimeamua, na kuanga hata nimeokoka. Nimerudi kwa yesu. It takes boldness. It takes boldness for you to believe that ukikazima, how to wake up at ten o'clock in the morning? All you guys are looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. It takes boldness for you to go to somebody and say to them, "I have been struggling with this thing. Please help me." Boldness. You think that thing is for people who are afraid? I think those are the weak ones. Me, I'm just going. The bold ones are the ones who actually reach out for help, not the ones who stay to struggle. Me, na 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 Take the help. There's help. His name is Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, if you, if you could give it to us in the message paraphrase from verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6 in the message paraphrase, Paul lines out a beautiful picture about the kind of help that we ought to have. It says, and that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. Let's continue. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so that you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. Because you and I know the devil is going to throw things your way. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, you're not the first one. That's what the devil does. He's a thrower of things in our way. Because he knows he cannot truly keep you from getting where God has, has, has told you to go. He will throw everything your way. He will bring discouragement. He will bring things in your path. He will cause you to fall out with the people who could help you. He will remove everything he can. He will throw things in your way. Because if he cannot kill you, he might as well stop you from getting to where you're going. Let's have that back up again as we continue. It says you must take everything that the master has set out for you because God has gone ahead of time. He knows this kind of life you're going to have. He says in John 16 verse 33, just leave this here. John 16 33 says to them, in this world you will face 
tribulations. Not you might or you may, you will. As you're adulting, as you're in your journey, your quest for being great, as you're trying to make it in the marketplace, there are going to come many offers. People telling you, do this, do that, do that to be great. People telling you, pay this, pay that, pay the other to be great. But you, beloved, must take the help that God has given to you. Let's look at it again. He says, you, my friends, must take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials and put them to use. Don't just take them, put them to use. Many of us have good weapons. The Lord has placed them at our disposal. We are righteous people. We know how to pray. You've been taught since you were in Sunday school. A lot of us here can even pray in tongues. But do you pray in tongues? You don't. You're not building yourself up. Every day you are coming out, you're just weak, 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 everything. Every wind of doctrine is swaying you. Sometimes just lock yourself in your room. And in the morning, just about 10, 15 minutes, reba kato lobo zima sheka taraba. Just edify. The Bible says, he who speaks in tongues is just edifying himself. He's speaking mysteries. Atawe welewi, inaitangwa bypass. Unapita your thoughts. Unaenda kwa mungu. I said, hey, I have to understand what I'm saying to God. Hey, Jenny, kid, hey, omba, wewe. It says, well-made weapons and put them to so that you will be able to stand up to everything. See, there's something here it says. It says, the only way you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws in your way is by putting the weapons to use. If you've been asking yourself, why am I not able? Why is the devil tripping me up? It is because in the day of temptation, you're not putting the weapons to. How many of us, don't lift your hand, but how many of us, when temptations are coming, you know you can pray, but the sound of temptation is so yummy. I mean, watch it. I mean, all you guys know what I'm talking about. We have the weapons. We know how to pray. We know how to talk, how to confess to one another and pray for one another so that we may be healed. We know that. But do we want to do it? Are we putting it to use? That's how the enemy is getting us every time. Let's look at it as we finish. It says, and put them to use so that you may be able to stand up against everything that devil, the devil throws your way. Next verse, it says, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. This is a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. I want you to leave that there for just a minute. I want you to look at it and think about the gravity of the life that we have. This is not just a thing we are in, alafu tutamaliza. It says this is for keeps. This life that we are in right now, the battle that we are up against right now, is a life or death fight to finish against the devil and all his angels. The Bible says when the Lord is speaking to the serpent and the woman in Genesis chapter 3 at the fall of man, he says, you, in Genesis 3, is it 15? He says, you shall strike his heel and he shall crush your head. Ni nani ataona mwingine kwanza? Mwenye ataona mwingine kwanza, ndiyo ana strike. So this is not, the devil is, is not that he, wazama, awa, nikimuona tuwacha ni msamehe, umse ya na kwanga mpoa. Ananga mambo mob, ude mata ananga ma stories. Nitawacha tumuache tu, let's li, let her live. Let her live. There's no mercy with the devil. I pray that our eyes can be opened so that we can see. Pastor Ali said to us one day in the G12 meeting, and it has never left me. He said, if the Lord opened your eyes just to see how much the devil hates you, yani wewe akiweza atakuwa leo. Oh my goodness, if you saw it the way it is supposed to be, you will be after him, hunting him down, wherever in your family. Bomoa, lipua, kila mahali. Not just hiding the devil. Nafunika jeshirani. Toa kabisa. Blow him out of the water. Let's finish. Be prepared, he says. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon that God has issued... So that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Hallelujah. You know what the definition of still being on your feet looks like? It looks like Stephen. When Stephen was beaten and beaten and beaten, the Bible says, Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. That was not somebody who was put out, my people. That was somebody who left the scene and was still standing. He fell asleep. He did not die. He fell asleep 
and woke up where he had seen, where Jesus was giving him a standing ovation. Hallelujah. That is the place of the witness. That for everybody that shall be approved, the Bible says in James, is it 1 and 12, that to those who will be approved, there is a crown of life that the Lord has placed for those who love him. We must take all the help that we can get. Take all the help that we can get. Take all the help that we can get. I want you to lift up your voice and I want you to pray over yourself that the Lord will open your eyes. That the Lord will cause you to see that this is no simple afternoon contest that will be done with. That this is life or death against the devil and all his angels. That the Lord will open up your eyes to see that there is a reason he has called you to be the believer in your generation. There is a reason he's stirring you up so that you may be different in this lifetime. In the name of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God. Come on, lift up your voice. You cannot be silent. You cannot be silent. You're asking, Lord, remember mercy. Lord, help me. Give me your Holy Spirit that I may be bold, that I may be a bold witness, that this year I may step out and do even more before the year is out, that I may go out and represent you truly in the name of Jesus. When you consider what you have done, oh, when you consider what you've done with our fathers of old, oh God, we know that there is such a thing as a boldness that is given by the Holy Spirit. There is such a thing as a true witness of Jesus Christ. That is what we desire because we know that's what you've called over us over for, oh God, to be real witnesses. That should be our everyday practice. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God Almighty. Help us, oh God. Reba koto lobo zima sheka ribaza. Tipo karama zeke liambre kando robo zika sha. Dipa kopre kente lebo zima shika riande reboza. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you're here and you've never given your life to Christ. Has every eye still closed? There is no boldness, beloved, without the Holy Spirit. And there is no Holy Spirit without Jesus. If you're here, you've never given your life to Christ and you desire to give your life to him today. If you just lift your hand, we'll see it quickly and pray with you. Are you there? Are you there? You want to give your life to Christ? We'd love to pray with you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Or maybe you're there and you are a believer already and you have had the things we are talking about today, but you need God to help you. If you'd be bold enough to just rise up on your feet, if you're saying, God, I want to take all the help that I can get so that when it's all over, I will still be left standing. I need the boldness to walk up and say, I need help. I need the boldness to just go around some people and say, I'm done with this life. I will no longer go to this place. It takes boldness. It takes boldness. It takes boldness. Thank you for those that are standing. It takes boldness. It takes boldness. If you're saying, God, I need help. I need help. I need help. I cannot do this by myself. I need help. I need help. Just take a minute and while you're yet standing, just lift up your voice and say, Lord, help me. I want to invite our bishop to just come and make that prayer over all of us in the name of Jesus. That the Lord would release boldness over us in the name of Jesus. That the Lord would release boldness over us in the name of Jesus. Boldness in the name of Jesus. Ripe katala boza. Ripe darabo kusabashe. Zekulama zeke rindarabo zima shepe ribra kantala bazi. Remayando robo zika sheke telebe. Riba baba zuko sheke riba zende riko zuko. Ribe za. Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we stand this morning in this altar, it is his response of what your servant has shared with us. And dear Lord, right here as we stand, we are praying, give us boldness. Give us boldness, Heavenly Father, so that we can declare. And what we declare, we have faith in. And what we declare, we walk in and our life changes from today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Garrison our mind, Heavenly Father, with that wisdom and understanding. The Heavenly Father that will come weapons for us, for our warfare. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to bless every one of us standing. Because Lord, where we are standing, we are saying, I cannot do it with my, on my own. 
I need your strength. And Father, I want to sp speak strength into everyone standing. And I want to speak victory into anyone calling on to you for victory. And I want to pray, dear Father, their life, oh God, as they redig the wells of their, 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 their wells of our forefathers. That Heavenly Father will get to that well that, dear Lord, it will be well for us. And we will know we have arrived in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, every one of us has the capacity within us to roar like a lion. Be bold as a lion over the things that we know because Lord will be a witness of the things that our God can do. Therefore, from this altar, I bless them in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And everybody say, Amen. Let's give the Lord praise.